Hello YouTubers, Patreons, mum and dad, anyone else who's watching, welcome to today's tutorial. We're going to be doing Horror Pops dotted with hearts. Horror Pops, let me tell you, Horror Pops had a massive impact on me. I went and saw Horror Pops, I was actually 17. I managed to get it, get into the Evelyn Hotel Brunswick, I think Collingwood, sorry, it's on Brunswick Street, Collingwood, and see this band. It's not a huge room, like it probably holds maybe 300 people crammed in. Back then, the laws were a lot slacker, obviously me getting in. I mean, I still don't look 18 if I'm clean shaven, so it's pretty amazing that I got in that day. And I remember the security guard actually looking down at me. It was like, I know, I know, kid, but I'm going to let it go. And I'm really thankful he did that because it was huge. So I'll never forget, I was watching a support band. I can't remember who was playing, uh, but I just had this feeling. There was this presence in the room, and I turned around. And behind me watching the support band was the whole Horror Pops crew. There was the Necro Man with his quiff. Actually, I had a pretty good quiff then. That doesn't happen anymore. But um, he had a huge quiff and Patricia was there. I think it was Nels? Nels? And I can't remember his name, but the it was a drummer. Sorry, drummer. It was it Jeff from who played guitar in Tiger Army as well. And they were just standing there like a gang. I think they might have even had the go-go dancers too. So they were quite a sight. And they were all leather jacketed up. And um, I just walked straight up to Patricia. And I basically said, I, I actually discovered Psychobilly largely through that album cover. A girl at school had that album cover as a sticker. And uh, I was like, Who, who's that band? And she said, oh, that's a band called Horror Pops. They're really cool. You know, the chick on the thing, she plays double bass and stuff. So I managed to get a copy of that album. And my brother came home at four in the morning one morning. And we had a stereo next to our bed. And I actually put the Horror Pops on at four in the morning. Um, even though we lived in a tiny house, the, the whole family lived in like a very small house. It was a bit risky, but I was able to put it on at low volume and um, yeah, we listened, we had a little bit of a listen to it and I don't think my brother really cared, uh, but <laughs> I, I was just really taken by the sound, you know, and all the funky chords that Necro Man used and his wild guitar playing and just everything about the vibe of it really got me into Psychobilly and from there, that, that really, yeah, changed the direction for me. Yeah, so that's the story. I hope it was worth waiting. I know I'm a talker. You know, there's someone who actually serially comments on my videos and says, talker, talker. Like, he really doesn't like when I talk. I find it kind of amusing. Anyway, thanks for indulging me. We're going to get on with the lesson now. So you've just watched me do the playthrough. It's going to be on Sound Slice with the tabs below it. And for Patreon members, of course, you can get the guitar profile. You'll get the, a PDF. Get all the extras. It's it's good to be a Patreon if you want to learn this stuff. You get all the extras, but you guys know, ladies and guys, folks, you folks know that I will teach you everything anyhow. Uh, it's really just about you supporting me through the Patreon if you can do that, um, and you get a few bonuses for it. So let's get to work. I'm going to bring the camera forward. We're going to work through the whole song. The transcription is literally a playthrough start to finish transcription with repeats and everything, so that's kind of really handy. And I've got to thank my latest Patreons as well, which was Brian McCarthy, thank you, and Charlie. Thank you, Charlie. Okay, so let's get to work. Now, I'll play through a little section and then I'll teach it to you. So the very beginning goes... That's our intro, okay? So that probably would sound a little better, slightly dirty from uh, memory listening to the intro. So, um... I've put the pedal on for now. But what we do, we start with uh, this two on the fifth string. The song is in the key of B minor. Okay, oh, sorry, B major, more or less. And there's a few hairy things going on that would be outside a little, but that's cool. We're not too worried about that. We go two, two, one, one, zero, zero, one, one. Okay, two, two, one, one, zero, zero, one, one. Really easy. All downstrokes, totally fine. Okay, don't need to do anything fancy there. This song's not that difficult. That's the great part, but it's brilliant all the same. Then we do it as a power chord. So you could use your pinky on the fourth string. That would be fine, or your third if you can. Okay, but I just play those two strings, fifth and fourth. I actually don't want to play. I don't want to do that. It's too much. We just want the two strings, okay? Fifth and fourth. So we, we're doing the B5, B flat 5, A5. Okay, so I'm holding the second fret there and playing fifth string open. Back to B flat 5. And then the next thing we do is we play the sevens. Uh, double stops at the seventh fret. So that's like a B. Think of the top of a B chord. And we just go backwards. Okay, really simple. Seven, seven, six, six, five, five, six, six. 
And then we stop on the seven, and we do this little pentatonic lick, B minor pentatonic lick. Yes, over a B major chord, that does work. Okay, seven, five, seven, bend back to, bring it back to pitch, five, seven. Okay, that's it. Now we get into the verse where the singing begins, and that goes like this. I'm going to clean it up because that would be a much cleaner tone. I don't like tap dancing while I'm playing. I Maybe I can't do two things at once that well. Um, strangely, the chet picking stuff is really comfortable for me, yet I don't like to move my feet while I'm, anyway. So, uh, the actual verse now, there's two guitars here, and what I've done is loosely incorporated two guitars. So you don't have to do this detail, but, um, so to begin with, we do, we play the B5, and then we lift our first finger, and I would strum, I like to strum with the right hand down and up, but... That would be totally fine if you want to do it all down. The main thing is that you get it one, two, three, and four, and like that. Okay, so one, two, three, and four, and one. Now the second guitar, if you want to incorporate it, is playing these double stop sevens up there. I'll use my pinky so I can get back in time. I only did it a couple times in the playthrough. But it's not really what's being played. So if you don't want that demand on yourself, just do this. Okay, so that's the that's the whole. I didn't actually play that first. I should have played it first. But so the verse goes like this with that in mind, uh, without the second guitar part. Last one has a slightly different rhythm. We come up going one, two, three, and four, and one, two, and three, and four, and and what we do, uh, yeah, you just finish that up. I actually think you might even hit that fourth string open. I didn't actually uh, write that in there. Now I'm not sure. This happens sometimes. I'm overcomplicating things. It really, it's probably not a big detail. But we go, we finish by going, and we jump to the A flat five. So now we're at the A flat five and that goes like this. I'll actually play this first. I would incorporate this. Again, this is a second guitar, uh, but it's a lot easier than our situation with the B five and the double stop up there. So the second part is from the A flat goes. Okay. Yeah, that's right. So, um, that's why I say you do this here if you can. If you don't want to do it, just go. Sorry, I'll just do it the way I'd rather you do it. So. Okay, and then we go to the next chord. So the reason I'm saying it's more plausible is obviously because it's just on the, the double stops are on the fourth fret. So you can sort of just go. There's one more there, but I wouldn't do it because you want this rhythm. It does this sort of extra few of those, if that makes sense. So, of course, make sure you know the track really well. Really listen to this guitar part. If you're hearing that and you're not sure what's going on, uh, aside from it probably being my bad explaining, make sure you know the song. So you know how that goes. Really have a good listen to it. So the next part, a very strong two guitar part. There's two very distinct guitar parts, but... Um, I've sort of combined, one's going uh, dun, dun, something like that, and the other one's going and in the live version, there's a great live recording of this uh, that they put out a couple of years ago when they, I forget what it's called, Live at the Wilton? I can't remember. But uh, it, it's, uh, you can hear Necroman possibly as the only guitar player doing He's just doing that bit. So there's two guitar parts and he's just doing oh oh four four two two oh 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 four four two two oh oh. So A, G sharp, F sharp, E, E. What I've done is kind of combined the two because I heard that sort of after I'd already started working on this and what I decided to do was do like an A5 and hit the fifth and fourth string and then do the four four two and then go O oh, two O. Oh. So it ends up going And that's what I do for the A chord in that four bars. 
So uh, what I'll do at the end of this, I'll play the whole verse for you, uh, just sort of at a medium pace. You've probably already seen me play it roughly anyway in the playthrough, but the next thing after that, after four bars of that, is the F sharp five. It's just like this. So it's an F sharp there and a C sharp there. Yeah, sorry, there's that lick at the end. I'll explain that in a sec. So it's really not too hard. It's just this F sharp five, one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one. And then the lick is O2, bend the two, come back and play the two, just like that. And nice and simple, not too complicated. No, 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 no. Uh, so I'll just play through the whole verse so you can have a crack now. You might be struggling along, but just have a bit of a bash, even if you just want to loosely get the idea. One, two, three, four. If you want to do that. Don't forget about that. So that's the first time around. I actually got a little confused there because I've already played that verse for you and there's a, it all repeats. So the good news is what you're up to now is basically the chorus, but all that repeats and we do a different lick, which is what my brain went to, which goes... When we stop, you just do four on the fifth string and then two on the fifth string like that. Okay? That's everything up to the chorus. And the chorus... Again, there's two guitars, maybe even some dubbing. So I don't, I wouldn't get too attached to any particular idea for the strumming. What I'll do is give you, here's a structure, and then you play that. And if you want to vary it and play around with it and do what you feel, that's what I would advise. Okay, so put the overdrive on for that. All right, so after we've done that lick, we got, I've got this right down. Let me play it for you. So that's the crux of the chorus. That's really everything. That'll get you through no problems. And there's another guitar doing all kinds of stuff. I didn't go there. I thought, let's not go there. It's mushy. It's a little hard to read. And I thought, you're just going to want to play the chords anyway. Then you can sing your heart out, your dotted heart out. Three, four. So B. And I'm going one and two and three and four. And, and then I'm moving to the G sharp chord. One, and I sort of do a half strum. Sorry, it's a G sharp minor. Sometimes I think it might be a major. I think someone in there might have been, I don't know. I keep hearing a G sharp major, but when I really drilled down, I was hearing a guitar playing a G sharp minor. So we're just going to go with G sharp minor. One, two, three, and four. Now, as you change to that G sharp minor, just let go of that B major. So the B, by the way, second fret, fourth fret, fourth fret, fourth fret. This might be a bit of a tough one if you're not used to it. You could use your pinky and your third finger to help clamp it a little, okay, to help press it down. I just I, I, I just do a B like that. I put my fourth finger right across. That takes a while to get the strength. If you don't have it right away, just keep at it. Play it badly for a while because when you're playing it badly, you're getting a good workout and that finger will get stronger. Just like that, okay? One, two, three, four. And then we go to the, the G sharp minor, which requires a bar chord. Make sure you get close to that fret. The closer you are to that fret, the better. Don't be on top of it, but nice and close. Right across. It's like a power chord, but we don't we don't need this second finger if it was we would need the second finger if it was a major chord, but it's not. So we have that up. Okay, when you're checking these chords, pick each string. Is there anything that's not really working? Well, we'll see. You'll see when you pick through it like that, okay? So that's the G sharp minor. Okay, down, 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 up, down. Then we go to the E chord. And again, I, I think I went to say it before for the B and I didn't. But when you're crossing from B to G sharp, if you leave a little early and you get a bit of mush in between, that's fine. See that little chain? See that 
change. It doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be perfect. Leave a little early if you're struggling to get there. Okay. Then we go to an E chord, E major. Okay. O two two one O O. Nice and easy. I don't think I described this chord for you guys, but that was four six six four four four. Don't hate me. There's a lot going on in here. It's hard to hard to get it out smooth. So E. Then F sharp major. Two, four, four, three, two, two. Okay. Two, four, four, three, two, two. Four. Strum that one like that. That's your chorus, so. Sometimes I strum a little shorter and then I open it up like. That's a really nice sound. The third time, however, one thing that I do different, and you hear in the song. Put the pinky down. F sharp. Okay, so that's an E sus chord, and I've put that in the transcription. It says note, the ver note variation. I didn't mean that as in there's a note variation. I mean as in take note of the variation. Although I guess it's a note variation anyhow. Um, that's so that's the chorus. You come off the chorus after the just back to this riff. Then the drums kick back in, and you're back into a verse. The verse is exactly the same as before. So you're just off to play the verse now. So all we really have left to do now is that spoken word part. So again, this is another sort of grain of salt section where we can we can play exactly like Necro Man uh, if if you want to. But in actual fact, even he plays it different live because he's just sort of feeling where to put these little hits. And let me show you what I mean. So the actual section, let me grab the... Here it is. Put that there. Put that up. There's a lot of pages. They don't all fit on the music stand. I should show... Like, I have a pile of transcriptions on my desk. It's like this now. And it's only about a quarter of them that I've actually printed. So you get if you join the Patreon, you get access to it. It's becoming a big library of rockabilly, psychabilly stuff. So and I'm, I'm probably going to expand a little bit too, do a little bit of some alternative stuff as well. Kind of why I like this band too. So the spoken word part, um, it's this kind of thing which you would have heard, and he does these little random little flicks in there. Um, so I will show you how to do that exactly as he does it in the recording. I don't think I even nailed it in the playthrough. I missed one or two. Um, but keep in mind, you know, if you auditioned for Horror Pops because Necro Man was busy, uh, I don't think they would kick you out if you didn't nail it as the original recording. So let me show you what I mean. So we've got one and two. We're playing a B5. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and up. So we get this little... that first line okay so you can see where those flicks are one and, and what you're doing you're strumming and you do a pull off there with this finger so one and two and three and four and oh, oh no sorry it's the second bar see what i mean no one would kill you if you had done it there one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and a one and two and three and four and a one and two and three and four and so that last bit and you lift your first finger, three and four, and you hit the fourth string open as we change to the A flat five. So this time, and now from the A flat five, straight in, in that very first bar of A flat five, uh, marked 62 on your transcription. I haven't been using the bar numbers, I apologize. One and two and three and four and one. So what we do here, we strum, we slide the, the whole chord back and forward. One and two and three and four and a one. Okay, so it's between the and and the one. One and two and three and four and a one and two and three and four. This one's a little different. This is probably the trickiest one to get, and I did get this one, and then I missed one of the ones later, which I was a little bit spewing, but one and two and three and four and a one and two and three and a four. So that so the next bar there, he does it between the three and and the four. 
okay? One and two and three and four and a one and two and three and a four and, and then on the and he actually goes back to that G5. That's a tricky little bar. So tricky little two bars, I would say. One and two and three and four and a one and two and three and a four and like that. We go back to A flat. Two and three and four and a one and two and three and four and one. So you see in that last bar, he does it on the one and two and a three and four and, which is actually really clever. You know, it's really clever and slightly unpredictable tension building in my opinion. I really, really dig that. I'm going to play the whole four bars. This is probably my favorite four bars of the song in terms of clever guitar work. One, two, and three. Okay. Good luck with that. It is tricky. It is tricky, but you don't have to do it perfectly. Just see if you can get the vibe of it and do it wherever you feel, you know. It doesn't matter. It's just really cool. Um, and then we go to the F sharp five. Uh, so it's two bars. One and two and three and four and 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 Hopefully you caught that, okay? So it was uh, on the one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and a one and two and a three and four. And it happens really quickly there between the second and third bar of the F sharp. So one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and a one and two and three and four and a one and two and three and four. Then he goes to the E chord and he goes... So he's just doing an E sus, he's going. I like to strum down and up for that bit. Uh, if I was doing it exactly the way I want to play it, uh, I'm just going. So I'm doing a, a little little pick of the sixth string, and then I'm putting my pinky down, and I'm doing an up, down, up. So up, down, up. And then after the up, down, up, I lift the finger again. Uh, no, I lied actually. I do one more down. And then lift the finger. That's for three bars. Two and three and four and one and two and three and four and two and three and four and the last bar you do sort of like a you just basically, you know, do it's in little sets of two actually. I played that wrong. There we go. So it's one and two and three and four. And... So he just gets a bit more random with that finger. Um, I could get really detailed about how to play super close to what he's playing or spot on to what he's playing just mix it up you know he's he again he wouldn't have sat there and gone i'm gonna do this on this bar and this on that bar and this on that bar he he would have just had he would have just been playing i i think necroman's very a very organized player so he would have known roughly what he wanted to do but the execution can vary okay so that is literally everything in the song because it goes back to the chorus that you already know <laughs> the whole song and it's a great song uh but the end there's only one other thing i want to show i didn't play it in the little recording i did but you can hear the guitar do this at the very end um there's there's some licks there in this the, the last section you can hear it very subtly there's a guitar lick that goes okay one of the last choruses so check that out that's just two two five two uh, three, three, and you bend from the three. Two, two, five, okay? It's a little hard to hear in there, but I thought I'd just throw that in there for a little bit of fun. And you finish that chorus if you choose not to play that riff, if you're just playing the chords, simply by playing... And 
kind of goes into the next song on the album, which is really cool. I think it's I think that's what it is actually. I've never tried to learn it or whatever, but I heard it a million times. I think yeah, I nearly did it at the end of the song, but I wasn't 100% sure what the chords were. Didn't want to make a fool of myself, so I did that now instead. Anyway, guys, that's it. That's the end of the the lesson. That's everything. Make sure if you've especially if you've come this far and you're not a patron, consider joining because you get the tab, you get the transcriptions, you get bonus stuff, and you obviously really enjoy this what I'm doing. That's that. Uh, if not, if you are a member and you've come this far, thank you so much. Thank you to everyone. Please leave a comment. Please share this with anyone you know that might enjoy learning it. And uh, yeah, enjoy the rest of your day. And uh, I will see you next week. <laughs>